full of deception and trials, in which Iblis and his loyal army make the ugliness look beautiful in your eyes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my channel, RZ Dunya. And today I am going to react on a video from the National Believer. It is from the series of End Time series, part 6. The world is ready for the arrival of the biggest fitna, the Jal. So let's begin. I am reacting on this series for the first time uh, from the National Believer and uh, from uh, what I have seen in other reaction channels they have some kind of uh, copyright protection for the recitation of the Quran so I have muted it just for the precaution sake I don't know whether it will be applied to me also or not but still for the uh, precaution sake I have muted it we are witnessing a great change in the world. A materialistic world full of deception and trials, in which Iblis and his loyal army make the ugliness look beautiful in your eyes and present it to you as worldly pleasures to deceive you. The evil and corruption is reaching its climax. So we are living in a time of the great fitnas. Fitna is a very deep concept in Islam. A fitna can be a trial or a tribulation, a type of punishment. A fitna can also be a test that you're put under. A fitna can also be a gray area where you're not sure which way to go. You don't know whether to go to the left or to the right. You're in a state of confusion. That may be one of the worst forms of fitna. And so that is striking our community today. The Prophet says, Fitanun Fitan will be so much Fitan will be everywhere like dark night. As you are living in that pitch dark night. In that time, the Prophet ﷺ said, a person will be in the morning a mu'min. He didn't say Muslim. He said mu'min means he's a believer. And in the same night, the same person will be kafir. Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine what kind of fitan that we will live in? Or we will live or we are living in actually. The Prophet ﷺ says, فَتَجِيءُ فِتَنٌ يُرَقِّقُ بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا There will be more fitan will come every time. Each fitna will come. It will be more horrific and more destructive than the previous fitna. Which means the fitan that we are living right now, it is more severe than the fitan last year or two years or five years ago. And then the next year and the coming up year, years, three, two, four, five years, it will be more horrific and it will be more terrifying and it will be more destructive fitna that people will face. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that each fitna will come, it will be more severe than the previous one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and he keep us and our children in his protection always. When we used to read in about the fitna that will happen in the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then uh, we always thought that it will be something that will happen in the lifetime of our children or maybe the grandchildren. And we will not see most of those fitna in our lifetime. And uh, especially this uh, alphabet community fitna. So if we all have read about the Prophet Salam people and their life, their fitna, their crime, for which they were destroyed. And in Quran it is mentioned that they were punished for this alphabet community, what they are doing right now. So this alphabet community fitna, we never imagined that it will happen in our lifetime. And uh, among us girls, we used to talk that uh, we will have to prepare our children for our day of future and uh, they must know that something like this can happen with their children. 
but uh, we never thought that we will have to prepare ourselves for preparing our children. We will have to guide them. And the more the time is passing, in the few years, just a matter of few years, it has become so widespread. And now it is also reaching from the Western countries to the third world countries. And it's very scary. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, our children, our grandchildren, our generations to come from this fitna and guide them and keep them on the correct path. I mean. Do you know why evil and corruption is hyping to its peak? Because we live in a world that is strangely controlled by sick people. They spend billions of dollars every year to promote indecency, immorality, corruption, atheism, and instilling their lies into the public mind through the media and politics. <coughs> we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. They're the ones that control the transnational corporations, governments, the banking system, the whole shebang that um, dictates and uh, controls the direction of society. Um, they can do horrendous things that we couldn't even contemplate because we have empathy with the victims of our actions. They do not. Without that emotional consequence, there are no limits. And we see that on the news every day. One of the signs of the Day of Judgment is what? That a person is sitting in maybe end of the world and he will say kalimatan, he will say a word of lie and that word will go all the way from Mashriq till Maghrib, from east till west. And this is what happened. A person is sitting in front of a TV or a social media and whatsoever. People just lying and people are just saying things which is not true and other peoples are believing. My brothers and sisters, we used to live in a time when we used to do the munkar. We used to reject and deny and say zina is haram. But today's time, we deny and reject and we say the action of Lut is haram. And we're telling and talking to the people because zina becomes something yani, normal, unfortunately, right? So we are telling people right now that the qawm lut and the amal qawm lut and whatsoever they are doing, it's so severe. Be away from it. Allahu a'lam what will come in future. May Allah protect us. Before we... Few years ago, like around 15 or 20 years ago, friendship between opposite gender was frowned upon. It was something which is which was not acceptable in especially in the Muslim community. Now people are scared if it, it is truly happening and now people are scared that their children whether their children are having friendship among the opposite genders or not, whether their children are interested in opposite gender or not. It is so scaring that how our mentality is changing, how something which was haram earlier, now people are forced to accept it in some way or the other just because to prevent from the something which is more horrific. Although it is not a good idea to support evil, evil is evil, wrong is wrong, haram is haram. But parents are afraid. They don't want their children to go on the path which this world is now forcing them to. Slowly and steadily this has been injected in our community, in our society. Even in the Muslim family, we can see that slowly our, in, in fact in our generation as well, many people are turning towards the 
alphabet community and i i'm not naming the community because it gets flagged so i call it alphabet community and people are turning towards it and parents are scared for their kids and now they want that it is better for their kids to be friends with opposite gender which is not allowed in islam which is prohibited in islam rather than being a part of that community so this is one of the example of how i am becoming normal and even after knowing that it is haram it is wrong pe- people are forced to make such choices may allah subhanahu wa taala protect us and our children from such horrific time which is coming in the future there was a time when living relationship was not accepted it was something really very bad really really very bad even in non muslim community i'm not talking about muslim community even in non muslim community living relationship was not acceptable slowly and uh, due to the influence of media and uh, bollywood hollywood it became normal now in non muslim community slowly this alphabet community is being is getting accepted and uh, muslim parents are afraid that it can happen with their children also and it is happening as well this is how slowly haram is being injected in our society be it interest be it zina be it homosexuality be it uh, fornication everything is slowly becoming normal these are the new normals of the society today and with the new media platforms coming up every year every month it is getting more and more difficult to protect our children even as a parent we have to keep an eye on what type of children program our kids are watching on youtube tv everywhere we have to keep an eye on our children what type of program they are watching there are few points which we as parents must always watch for number 1 never ever let your children or kids watch shorts or tiktok few second few minutes videos there you don't know what the next shot will be you don't know what will come up and what your children will watch never ever let them watch that and the things which shot in shorts comes up even for these small kids really it's very 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 bad for them for their mental health if we don't look for it then it will teach our children stuffs which we as parent don't want our children young children to learn so early in their time they will grow beyond age before time and second thing for whatever content they watch keep an eye on them don't give them free hand if by chance even after all this prevention and all they come across certain things and they ask you about it don't shy away from it and answer them truthfully as per their my brothers and sisters say al khamar haram and we used to say al kahul we reject al kahul and we say it's haram and we used to do the munkar of al kahul nowadays we are telling people that we reject and deny the drugs and all forms of the drugs that is everywhere right call it pills call it candies call it whatsoever everywhere subhanallah before we used to call to people and we do the munkar we used to reject and deny the women who are wearing not wearing hijab or putting makeup and perfume and going outside and we used to deny that and reject that but now we are rejecting and denying and doing the munkar of those men copying and following and imitating women subhanallah If you say anything about these LGB and whatsoever you call it and if you say out loud and you talk about it in a halal way and a right way and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you to do you will be the criminal 
you will be stopped from the traveling. You will have the travel ban. You will be accused as a criminal. You will be, you know, put fine on you. You will be jailed. Why? Because you said the haq. Speaking against any religion is a freedom of speech. Burning their scripture is a freedom of speech. Harming them is a freedom of speech. But not even a word can be spoken against certain community. Saying something bad about their community is out of question. Even a single word against them is not acceptable. Men are imitating women. Women are becoming men. And it is strictly forbidden for a man to imitate a woman and vice versa. And now it is becoming something which is very common in Western countries. And this fire is spreading and reaching to the Eastern the countries time as well. When there is, unfortunately, they are making the haq haram and haram haq and halal haram. Subhanallah. And wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah. This is the time that we are living in, that everything that you will do right, it is wrong. And everything that you do wrong, it is, you know, going with the flow. And everyone is going with the flow. Subhanallah. The system offers you worldly pleasures that you will never get unless you become a part of the system and serve it. And do you know what it makes of you? A slave. Or in other words, you have to sell your deen to get the dunya. This is indeed a business, a deceptive business, which will end up with an irreparable loss. They're selling their deen, they're selling their principles, they're selling whatsoever they have from morality and everything because of this dunya. Imagine someone is selling the deen because of a little bit of money, bugs, dinars, dirham, or a position, or whatsoever from the dust or from the rubbish of this dunya and they have no problem with it this is the time that we are living in that everything is changing changing so fast that you don't know what to do and what not to do how you protect yourself and your families so these seditions are increasing rapidly day by day in order to prepare the world for the arrival of the biggest fitna the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said oh my people there has been no fitna on the face of this earth, no trial on the face of this earth since Allah Azza wa Jal created the children of Adam, the offspring of Adam. There has been no trial on this earth and there will be no trial on this earth until the day of judgment that is greater than the trial of the Masih al Dajjal. Dear viewers, what you're going to see in the next few episodes of this series is a research-based documentary about the arrival of Al-Masih al-Dajjal, Yajuj and Majuj, and the state of Muslim Ummah on those severe times. Since these are of the great signs of the hour and the biggest tribulations in the history of mankind, the whole topic needs a real analytical research. Therefore. We have put a lot of time and effort to produce this documentary, which will be different from most documentaries and films you have ever seen. So by acquiring this knowledge, you can prepare yourself against these great fitnas, inshallah. this video ends over here may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the members the team of the rational flavor for their efforts and their series are worth watching and very knowledgeable be it the end of time series or the army of Saturn series and uh, many of their videos have already been taken down from the YouTube and still they keep doing it they keep putting the effort and bringing such knowledgeable and such informational videos to us. So all these ism, be it feminism, misogynism, atheism, and this alphabet community, XYZ community, all these things are propaganda from the West so that they keep the minds of people occupied one after another.
some or new thing will come up and people keep on speaking about them so that they forget about their actual purpose and the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is to worship him. If people are busy in fighting all one sin after other sin, then they will always be occupied and this is their agenda and there will come a time when they will forget what the good things are, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us about and even people will get so busy and so involved in this sin that they will forget about the jal also. In Islam, forbidden men to imitate women and women to imitate men. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what is going to happen and he warned us from such things. This world is getting more and more scary and full of sins. We don't know what our future generation will face, will see as we already saw so much in our lifetime. We never, we always think this is the limit. It can't get much worse than this. It can't get more bad than this. And it's in the next few years, we see much, 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 much more bad things happening. It, the, by the end of the time, it will get more difficult to keep a hold on our deen, on our religion in Islam. Even Muslims will find it difficult to follow the religion, follow Islam. And slowly, not so slowly in fact, in just few years we already see that it is coming true. If we speak something which is halal, we are not allowed to speak about that. If we say, support something which is haram, then whole world will come together to support you. But if you are against haram things, then whole world will come together to stop you from supporting halal thing. In fact, forget about practicing, forget about doing. Even speaking in support of the halal thing will, will put a uh, red mark on your forehead and we can see it happening to many of the people around the world in all the countries where if you are in support of the wrong the wrongdoers then you are very good but if you speak against them forget about the religion you can't even speak against the government or their policies their politics if you are against them then whole nation will be against you. If you support their wrongdoing, then you will be hailed, you will prosper, you will flourish. But we as Muslims, this world is not permanent for us. This is a trial and test for us. We must not forget that we have come in this world to give a test and tests are not easy. In, when we sit in exams, we don't expect our question paper to be easy. And especially for the believers, this test is much more difficult. Think about it like this. If you are prepared for the exam, you will be much more scared for what it will come in the question paper. But if you aren't even prepared about the exam, you will not worry about it because you will live in the that moment, you will keep enjoying yourself and you won't care about the result. But if you are prepared about your exam, but, but if you prepare for your exam, then you will be scared about the question paper. You will be worried about the result after answering the question paper. Same is the case for the believers. This world is test for us, so we have to be worried about it. It will be difficult, it won't be easy for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told, this world is heaven for the non-believers, but full of trial and tribulations for the believers. So if you can speak against the wrong happening in the world, then speak up. If you can't speak against it, if you can't stop it, then at least pray and 
pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he protect us from such wrong and harmful thing, haram thing. He protect our generation to come from such harmful and haram thing. And pray for those who are oppressed. Pray for those who are meeting injustice around the world for speaking up for the right thing, for the correct and halal thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all those who are taking a stand against the wrong and standing in support of the right ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength to become one and unite us to make us fight against this fitna, the greatest fitna which is going to come in the future and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our children and our grandchildren and our generations to come many many generations to come from the greatest fitna of the world that is at dajjal because prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if the dajjal comes during your time it is better for you to run away from him as far as possible may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Delay his coming to this world as much as possible. May he protect our generations from his fitna. And even if he comes, then may Allah Ta'ala And even after he comes, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala protect our children, us and our children, and keep us as far as away from him as possible. As far as away from his reach as possible. Because the time of a Dajjal is very scary time. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel RC Dunya for more videos. Jazakallah khair. Maas